Thing's still under construction, so don't mind stuff. It's still a mess. Yeah, we've been so busy lately, have not even gotten to the uh, weather damage in the back of the privacy fence and finishing it. Uh, that too, I'm always gone each week. Yeah, and I'm always busy doing other things too. Yeah, see, not much junk left. You should probably also, I still gotta move the wire, but as you can see, there's a spot right there getting ready for something. I don't know what. But, since my brother here normally travels for a living, he's actually home on a Sunday, which is very, very rare. So we're both out here. Yeah, we're both out here to give a small little tour of our little, little haven here. And just to let everybody know, this isn't everything. No, it's not. There's, there's still some cars on the far side. There's some in a storage bin or a storage shed. That has probably the most expensive back wheels we got, so that's where I was going to protect it. Yeah. But just to give you a rough idea, there's a 79 Ford 3 quarter ton tall boy. Which that one there's mine. I've had that since. Yeah, it's high boy. I think probably I was 17 when I originally bought that. Yeah, that was your first truck, wasn't it? My second. Oh, second. What was the first, first one? Was oh, it was that green uh, John Deere one yeah, that. Uh, that had problems. Yeah. It was pretty, I remember when he first got it, but uh, over time it just began to fall apart. It was just uh, one of those very. It was very... just one of those, when you're growing up, you know, that's your first vehicle, so. And he was still in high school at the time, and he needed a vehicle and stuff, so. Of course, his 58 Fairlane. Yeah, the big old Interceptor Special. And by the way, nothing out here is for sale. Yeah, but yeah, nothing out here is for sale. I know people have asked already. We've already, already had someone, very nice lady, asked about the 69 Comet. It's not for sale. If something does happen to one of us, we both talked about and agreed to get a uh, car museum involved and uh, have these uh, displayed in the car museum when they're restored. Or unless some of them may go to family if they're interested, but they have to keep it. That's the torch over here. 68 Galaxy XL, two-door hardtop. Yeah, we're gonna find out maybe next month once I pull the body off of my 66 over there to see if the frame will actually fit on this. Because I've been reading online that supposedly 66 frames will fit on the 68s, but we're gonna find out about that when we're gonna put those rumors to to the test to see if it's true or not. This actually has a Z code, it's a 390, but um, it doesn't have the original front end because this was repainted. It was a restoration project sometime in the past, but we'll do a video on this another time, of March of the Galaxies Part 2, because we got this galaxy here, that one over there, and, and we got one, his, his special T-Bird, yeah, his Thunderbird a, special over there in the hibernation. Yeah, it's a 66 Galaxy. Yeah, factory three speed, which I didn't make too many of them, just like my uh, 65 XL over there. And of course, this is the 29 to 32 General Motors. I haven't fully identified it yet. No, but this is the Rat Rod project, and we're going to reinforce it with steel instead of wood because uh, it's not going to be your, guys, I guess you should say your typical Rat Rod. But it's still going to have the original frame, nothing cut on it, but it, uh, we got to figure something out for our good sized engine because uh, if we're going to turn this into a fun car, we're going to reinforce the entire body with steel instead of the wood frame structure. Better safe than sorry. And of course, next to it, the 34 Pontiac, two door sedan. Yes. This beautiful little girl. Which I gotta get blocked up. Which I think I made a mistake. I should have parked this over there by the shed because I thought about working on it. Yeah. But I didn't have that idea until we unloaded it, and positioned it over here. Now that's buried. Yeah, and plus two, I gotta be scooting it back over there and getting your rat rod up over right there, so that way we can have a little bit more room for right here. Yeah. <laughs> Another. Oh, go we're, ahead. We're mainly Ford nuts. Other big Ford fans. 
but anything from the 50s down, I don't care what it is. This is this is when everybody's cars were made made by hand. And everything had a really good look to them. Agreed. I don't care if it's a Pontiac, Chevy, Chrysler. Well, there's a Chrysler coupe hiding on the far side. Too. Nah, you're 27. Yeah, which is an interesting thing about that Chrysler. Back in those days, everyone wanted the bigger cars with the extra space for the bigger families. But it doesn't. His does not have a rumble seat. It actually has no, the full the, trunk. The 27 in particular actually came out with mine has a straight six in it. Still turns over. So I, what I did is I filled it full of oil so that thing wouldn't lock up by the time I get ready to work on it. And plus, I think these. I think I found out they made. 600 of these so had a full trunk lid. Yeah. Discontinued that body style and went to rumble seats. Yeah, we cannot find. That's one of the reasons why I got. Yeah. And we cannot find a trunk lid. We can get a rear axle for it, but not a trunk lid, not a full size trunk lid. Oh, I'll find it. Oh, yeah, we will. Just gotta look around, kinda sorta. But. Also, too, it's like this uh, GM, whatever it is, the bodies were actually held together by wood, which you can kind of see here. That's what was the main structure for keeping them together, have them all safe and sound. And this 34 Pontiac, well, same thing, same wooden structure, wooden structure on the doors and all that. It'll get the same treatment because this is not going to be a hot rod car in any way, shape, or form. I'll get restored original. Um, can't remember what kind of engine this ha this was, but it actually had the three speed, believe it or not. I don't think I'm going to go original on this. Oh, you're not? I'm okay. Oh, so you had the change of heart. Yeah, I've already been thinking about it. Okay. Of course, this is a 36 Chevy 5 on a The roof looks rough, but it's totally fixable. Yeah, I actually bought this at the same time I picked up this 34. Yeah, there'll be a picture up. I think I actually have a picture of that up on uh, Instagram already. Yeah, I think so. Whereas I ain't worried about the missing parts. Again, this is a 36 Chevy, so there's going to be a lot of reproduction stuff out there. They make a lot of these particular cars. Yeah, we don't care if it's a 5 window, 3 window coupe like this. No, it's, it's a coupe. Yeah, it's a coupe. coupe. That's why the reason why I picked it. I know a lot of people favor the uh, the three windows, but to us, a coupe's a coupe. Who cares? Seriously. And as you can see, it's easy stuff. Yeah, this is an easy pop out. Not compared to when I was just messing around on my road runner. That's actually very easy to fix itself, which I'm going to be working on hopefully in the next two to three weeks because. I have almost everything caught up, but yeah, just have to see what happens or what gets in the way again. Of course, this is my 51 Dodge Wayfarer. It still has the original flathead 6 in it. Yeah, I made a video on it. Well, no, we can show it again. It's all right. It's always love to recap. Because this is one of the years, I think, where they started putting, uh, I think, Mopar on these. I'm yes, not there's sure. Still Mopar. Yes, there's a Mopar sticker right there. Yeah. I'll get over on that side. Hopefully, I don't trip on the Pontiac. But I think it was the first year that they started putting Mopar insignias on these. But yeah, I ain't too sure. I just like the dashes in these big cars like this. I mean, the dash is complete. And this was a type of uh, blue once. So, so, the thing is, though, uh, our friend, he had this for the longest period of time, but he didn't want to do nothing with it. Well, it's, everybody wouldn't touch it because somebody decided to make it turn into a pickle. Yeah. And people don't understand. And right there. Or they're afraid to tackle it. Is just find yourself a donor. Get rid of this, cut out what you need, put it back in. You yeah. There's, there's your fix. That's a pretty easy fix, but uh, we're trying to find a decent donor car that uh, has to be something like this, but if it was like a business coupe, uh, 
you know, the same year, yeah, we keep it back and wouldn't be a donor in any way, shape, or form. Because this is just like a type of standard coupe. It's not a business coupe, I don't think. Uh, it is a business coupe. Oh, it is? Okay. Yeah, big space oh, okay. So I stand corrected. It's a good thing he's out here because he knows more about his cars than I do. I know more about my cars than he does. <laughs> and of course, what we're leaning on, this is a 36 Oldsmobile three window. Oof. It is missing a lot of stuff. Yes. But again, it's a coupe. I had to pick it up. Uh, I may, I don't know if I'll ever find all the parts for it, but I know there's Cadillac with sale parts that are interchangeable with it. Yeah, the doors actually are. Right. Yeah, so if you're ever interested about the door swaps on uh, your Oldsmobile, your 36 Oldsmobile and your 36 Cadillacs, both doors are the same thing. Except the thing is that when we get to this old girl, is uh, going to have to restructure it because as you can see, the body kind of split apart and it's kind of just wobbly right there. So we're going to have a lot of fixing to do. And this particular model, or these models I should say, uh, they're very weak. Uh, when there's no structural support or frames on them because the back was all steel but up here in the front it was all wood and when the wood began to rot and if certain supports were actually uh, well started to rust and rot away your uh, post right here would actually begin to warp because we actually have this sitting just right right now the body is like I said it's starting to widen out, but still okay. Even if this warps and snaps in the post, I'll, we'll still fix it. But, uh, yeah. That's the only bad thing about your 36 ohms with Bill Coops. Because it was weak in the middle because they used wood. Even if it was on the frame and started to rot, it uh, still begin to have some weakness. I think there's a, there's a split over here somewhere. Uh, yeah, right yeah, here. That's easy. Yeah, it's an easy fix. But they normally split right there, along there, or on the posts, or up on top. Okay, over here, this is a 52 Buick. Uh, I think it's, this is a tour back. It's actually a mid-model car, but again, yeah, I'm a Ford nut, but I like these years of Buick. There's something about these cars that I just Dash is all complete. Still has the fireball I do have the intake put up in the garage. That thing is huge. Yeah. I do have the carburetor too. The nice thing about this car is the, the hoods open on both sides. Yeah, if I open up the other side, I have to get a bunch of WD 40 to move that thing up. Yeah. I just gotta scoot it forward because that wasn't there it goes. Well it's not missing a whole lot. kind of still kind of rough but yeah but when you get a car that's been sitting in a junkyard I mean as you can see in the middle uh, Buick 8 I can't flip the screen on this potato because if I do it'll actually black out and shut off and the engine still turns over in this believe it or not it's, it's not, not locked, locked up. up yeah surprisingly I can't remember what size it is but they made three different sizes of the screen in this is the mid one I think it's like a 280 something it's a uh, it's like the 223 or, or something, I can't remember. I don't know. I but it's the mid-range, yeah. Now, this door didn't work before before we got it, and someone tried to, you know, pry, pry right into it. But, uh, and of course, too, an interesting thing about these uh, 52 Buicks is that I got the wraparound glass right here, and they were the three-piece on each side, pretty much. Wraparound glass. And there's a very faint curve, as you can see. And this is another car I screwed up. I should have parked by the lane two to work on. But instead, it's buried back here. 
Yeah, it's buried. I got three other projects in the process of. Uh, I don't know if the. Yeah. See, in the back. Very big trunk space, and of course, uh, the spare tire holder. Uh, yeah, it's really not too bad. Just needs some. Uh, a little bit of loving. And I don't know what kind of color this actually was. I don't remember. I got I wrote everything down. So. Yeah. Of course too. Have a dome light for your uh, for your trunk. Which is actually kinda nice. Hopefully that's not too loud. But believe it or not, I actually paid four hundred bucks for this car. Yeah, and shockingly too, uh, there's a guy that was trying to get your chrome off of it too. Yeah, he offered me about five hundred dollars for three pieces, or three certain three pieces of it. But if I sold it, what am I gonna do? Yeah, and those are kind of hard to find chrome pieces, so he would have been left out. Here comes the wind more. <laughs> Again, there's really no decent days to record stuff anymore. Again. Galaxy Thunderbird Special. It is missing a few things, but this is a uh, factory four-speed on the floor manual transmission. Yes, it's just, it is the XL version. Right. And then everything for the seat is down there. Dash is complete. I have a second dash for it. It is missing a few fenders and stuff like that, but again, that stuff there is attainable. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Yeah, this... Uh... I think the door opened up on this. Ah! No, nope, not this side. I thought it did. Yeah. Yeah. I just had to get them up off the ground so be a little bit more protected. Try to get over on this side here without getting poked to death from the willies. You can see the factory, and this had the top loader shifter, didn't it? I can't remember. I don't remember, but it was a, it is the ma factory manual on the floor. Yes, and as you can see, there's a lot of goodies to it sitting inside. A lot. All right there's the XL Signia and the XL over there, which I can't not quite show. We do have the bucket seats for it, but they are put up. Which I need to dump some of that chrome and put it up also. Yeah, we're going to be doing that sometime very shortly. And of course, too, another confirmation Galaxy 500 XL. Chrome strip, I'm going to try to save back because uh, there's a certain technique that I'm going to try to get that smash spot out. Because, oh, uh, worry about that. Yeah, yeah but the it's. Chrome, I'll save the. Fenders, you can still get. Yeah, and also too, we actually have uh, an original emblem down here too for what a 390. Ooh, there's the. And of course, this big yellow boat, the 64 part, Monterey Modern. Yes, it's it is the 352. Um, if it had the 390, where I've learned it, it was actually have those flags on these. But since it's just a 352 block, there's no flat racing flag on it. But of course, too, it could be wrong because there's a lot of mixed information out there on this. Guys, we got two 64s sitting side by side, the Galaxy XL and the Marauder. Not too much stuff can actually be interchangeable on these except for the front windows because you can see both chrome pieces and the windows are the same kind of style. I think that's the only thing that can be crossed over between both the Marauder and the Galaxy. But yeah, I uh, was going through a rough time and couldn't quite afford it, and kind of became jobless for a while. And and while this became a birthday present for me back in 2013, along with the 65 XL. Which that 65 XLs kind of very extremely rare. Uh, I don't know how rare it is, but some people have been telling me on some forums. I'm not going to tell where because I don't want everyone following me. But I guess some people are telling me that this uh, 
three speed galaxy is, is extremely rare because it didn't make too many three speeds. And this is a Z code, so it has the 390 in it. Um, I always thought that this had the 289 placed into it, but no, it's actually another 390, but it's a uh, oddball 390, which is kind of strange. Uh, I showed it in the video and everything, but I'll show the dash in this Monterey Marauder. As, uh, I'm going to be tearing the dash out of this shortly and start working on it. As you can see, it's still quite complete. I gotta take the uh, steering wheel off too and get it taken into a specialist and restore that because I don't know how to do those. No, I know a company that takes care of that. Yeah. And this has. behind us, this is a 65 Galaxy. Yes, the XL. The other birthday present. Let's see if I can actually squeeze through here. Ah. Again, this was placed in the March of the Galaxies video part one. And not much is really missing on it. Um, but this is labeled a little differently than your conventional uh, XL. Because I showed in the back in the video and what you saw there does not have an original, uh, well I should say a conventional XL trunk lid, but it had something else. I could always put another one on it. And of course the XL emblem in the center there is missing, obviously. Front bumpers, they cross mix, you know, mix match with yeah, LTDs. Well yeah. But yeah. No, there's really not too much. It's just a uh, few odds and ends that I need to get off of an LTD. Because uh, when you try to get uh, 65 parts, uh, not many people want to part with a 65 Galaxy, but they want to part with an LTD. <laughs> then that next neck over here, this is actually a 1929 Dodge 56 sedan. Yes, with the suicide doors. Yeah, and believe it or not, this one window right here actually still rolls up, yeah, it still rolls up and down. which is shocking. Yeah. The it's, only reason why I bought it is because it reminded me of those old Mafia cars in the movies. Yeah, it really does, especially with the suicide doors, because we got two cars now with suicide doors. It's this one and that uh, GM or whatever it is, your rat rod. Yeah, the, the 29 to 32. Really yeah. Well, yeah, I had to have it. Body's still pretty really straight on it. Which, by the way, body by Fisher. Yep. Of course, the only damage I found on the body was there was a little dent there on the right-hand side, but that's an easy knockout. Yeah, and I see that some of the doors down there begin to rust out, especially the driver's side door, but that's no big deal. Oh, yeah, that was like that. Yeah. It needs to be uh, some restructuring because the body is lightly warped even before we put it on the blocks and the pallet. It um, it's not a hard fix, but uh, it it just needs to be straightened. And since uh, some of these uh, sedans down here are notorious for rotting out, as you can see right there, uh, it makes the body warp just a little bit more. So when we get to this, we'll have to restructure it more. And yes, also too, this is the same kind of thing that uh, body is reinforced by wood. We keep it together. Because I can see here on that side, right there's a bracket. What's left over from uh, holding whatever wood that used to exist right there. And then behind us, this is a 1948 Ford F3 pickup. This is gonna be my future four-wheel drive project. Yes, the I have two 48s. When I saw this sitting down there, I just. The sheer size of the truck and what cost 
caught my attention. The flathead's still in it. It still turns over. It's yeah. not locked up or anything like that. Transmission has some issues, though, but I think it's because it's been sitting out in the, wet, uh, in the elements for so long. Yeah. But it's, again, that flathead's not going to be in there. It's going to be a full drive. Yeah. I do have a tailgate for it. I've got that put up. Other than that, everything else, it is, it's a complete truck. Yeah, it's, um, I guess what they said, or what our friend said, that this F3 is actually bigger than most other F3s that he's seen. He's not sure why, but Terrier's almost pretty much there. But uh, this had a radio in it once, but it was taken out. And of course, too, those gauges down about right there, that's a special kind of feature for the F3, because, you know, it's... It's a bigger rig than your standard uh, half ton. And of course, there's a den on top. But that's a very, very easy pop. I don't know why we haven't popped it yet. But this was originally red and black. And of course, the F3 insignia. Try to get around this tent. And of course, weather damage I still need to fix. But yeah, for some reason, like I said, this is bigger than most F3s for some reason. It's not an F4 or a F2 and a half or any it's 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 an F3. But again, it's bigger than most F3s out there for some reason. No, they're it's about they're about the same. Oh, well, uh, hmm. I I'm, know the doors are interchangeable between everything from the F1 up to the old C. Yeah, that stuff's interchangeable, but yeah, That's what's nice about a lot of the Ford Fords. Yeah. Uh, you could go out. It's like the 54 panel truck right there I picked yeah. up a while back. The doors on that actually came off a beat truck. Yeah. They're the same thing. The only thing that's going to be different is your front clip is going to be as big. Yeah. But clarification, you know, like the frame and stuff on this, it's uh, bigger than most F3s. But everything else is interchangeable, like yeah, what he I said. Research it, yeah. It's a pretty solid truck. Yeah. I'm probably going to have to make a gate back here, something uh, in the future so we can get some cars out, maybe.